This is my favorite man page. In this video, I'm going to compare the manual pages of Unix version 1 with a modern day Ubuntu Linux distribution. Let's see how many of the commands from 1971 still exist today in 2023. So this here is a list of Unix commands as they appeared in the first edition of the Unix manual that was published on November 3rd, 1971. So I'll be going through each of these commands and testing to see which ones still exist in my modern day Ubuntu Linux machine. Okay, here's the first command. So it looks like the AR command does still exist. And it looks like it still has the same purpose as it did back in 1971. And I can actually say that I have used this command before to create libraries. Next up is the AS command. And the original purpose was an assembler. And it looks like that is still the case here. The next command is just the letter B for the B programming language the predecessor to the C programming language. That does not exist on my computer. And it's also interesting to point out that each of these commands is assigned an owner. This one belongs to Ken for Ken Thompson and DMR for Dennis Ritchie. The next command is BAS and there's no command for that. Now I'm sure for some of these commands I probably could find a uh, third party install that does basically the same thing. But I'm interested in seeing how many of these commands come pre-installed on a default Ubuntu Linux. Okay, next command is BCD. Looks like that doesn't exist. Next one is boot. So there's a man page for boot, but it looks like this man page is just general purpose information about booting. Here's a familiar command, the cat command, chdir. So that is not a command, but it looks like it does exist as a system call. The next one is the check command. So there's no check command and no man page for that. So I believe that command eventually became fsck for checking and repairing file systems. Chmod, that's a classic command for changing permissions on files. And to go with it, you have chown for changing ownership. The cmp command to compare two files. This is a command that I used in my video on debugging bit flips in memory. When I had those two images where the hashes were not comparing successfully. And here you can see the cp command for copying files is still around. And of course the date command is still around. The next one is the db command. So if I do man db, I get into this documentation, which does not look at all related. I would assume that the modern equivalent of this is probably the gdb command, which is quite useful for debugging applications. You can do all sorts of interesting things with gdb, like attach to a running process and view source code offsets if symbols are available. The next command is db ppt for dump binary paper tape. So it's not a big surprise that that's not around anymore. There's probably not a lot of hardware to go with it. The next one is the dc command, which is some kind of calculator. And once again, this command is still around. And if you're a system administrator, you're familiar with the next command, which is the df command. 50 years later, and these commands are still getting a lot of use. The next one is the dsw command. So it looks like the dsw command has been lost to history. The manual has an interesting note about this one. Its entomology is amusing, but the name is nonetheless ill-advised. I'm not sure what this means, but there's probably some interesting backstory on this command. So curiosity got the better of me, and I ended up doing a bit more research on the dsw command. I came across this post on lobster.rs. The most revealing description is in this archived blog post. In this blog post, it looks like this person was doing the same thing that I was. They were just browsing through old Unix manuals when they came across the dsw command and noticed the same comment that I did. So according to this, dsw is a loose abbreviation for delete from switches. And the switches in question were the front panel switches on the PDP-11. And apparently, the process of actually deleting files with DSW is fairly elaborate. According to this paragraph, to interactively delete files in the current directory, the user would decide how many files appeared in the directory listing before the doomed file. They would then set the console switches to that number, in octal of course, and run DSW. The program would then read that number of file names from the directory, store the name of the last file it encountered in its own process memory, print out that name, and then crash. The crash would produce a core dump, a raw representation of the contents of memory when the program crashed. To confirm the deletion of the named file, the user could then run the core file. That is, rather than running DSW again, they would read the contents of the core dump directly back into memory and jump back to that code. This would cause the DSW instance stored in the core file to read from memory the name of the last file it had encountered and delete it. In this manner, you could be sure that you would not delete a file unless you really meant to. Based on this description, it's not surprising that the dsw command doesn't exist anymore. And I also found this document that mentions more succinctly that the purpose of the dsw command was for deleting files that contained non-printable characters that had been accidentally created. Going back to that lobster.rs post, there is also apparently a link to the original source code for the dsw command. And while I'm here, I should point out that you can actually just delete part of this URL 
and you can find a whole bunch of other source code for various common commands that were running on the PDP-7 Unix. The next one is the DTF command, and this one is also no longer around. The next one is DU, and this is still around. It's used for estimating the amount of disk space used by files. The next command is ED, which is still around. This is a command line text editor, and it is the predecessor to Vim. The next command is find, and this is another one that I still use on a daily basis for finding files. The next command is just the word for, short for Fortran. These days, Fortran compilers have kind of gone out of style, so they don't come pre-installed anymore. The next one is form. Looks like another one that's lost to history. The next command is hup. And this one looks like it's no longer around. From the description, it looks like this command did the opposite of what the nohup command does. The next one is for loading binary paper tapes. And unsurprisingly, this doesn't exist anymore because there's not a lot of hardware to go with it. The next one is the ld command. This command still does exist, and it looks like it still has a similar purpose for linking object files together. The next one is the ln command, and this one is still around. This is still a pretty commonly used command. It's basically used for creating shortcuts. The next command is the good old faithful ls command. And as you can see, a lot of the options are still the same. And the original version of Unix already had a mail command. So even back then, they could send email. Now on my machine, I don't have the mail command installed, but I can say that I actually have used this command before. Back in about 2011, I did an internship at NVIDIA. When I worked there, there was a very old school programmer on the team, and he insisted that all of my code changes would be submitted to him via a patch file that was then piped into the mail command and mailed directly to him. So even on modern computers, it is possible to install a mail command, and if you want, you can just run bash scripts and have your output piped directly into an email that goes directly to the person. The next command is MESG, and it looks like this still exists, and it has a similar purpose. The next command is MKDIR to make directories, and unsurprisingly, this one is still around. The next command is MKFS, and this is still one that I use today to create file systems. Next is the mount command for mounting file systems, that is still around. And the same goes for the mv command for moving files. Next is the nm command, and this one is for listing the symbols from object files. The od command for dumping files in octal, that's still around. As is the pr command for formatting files so that they're suitable for printing. The ru command for rewinding tapes is no longer around. For anyone who does industrial scale backups, there probably still is a use case for this, so Maybe there's a package somewhere that actually includes this command. The same thing goes for the rkd command, and the rkf command, and the rkl command. Here's another familiar command again, the rm command for deleting files, and the rmdir command as well, and it looks like the roff command is no longer around. The same thing goes for the sdate command. The sh command is still around. The good old trusty sh command is found at this location, and as you can see here, it's usually symlinked to another shell. The stat command is another one that's still around. A lot of the information that you can get from this command is also displayed by the ls command as well. Next is the strip command, and it looks like the purpose of this command is once again still the same. The next familiar command is the su command. This is of course the command that lets you become the super user. Next is the sum command, which is a simple checksum. That's still around. Next is the tap command, which is another one for manipulating a tape device. This one is unsurprisingly gone. Next is the tm command for providing time information. This one no longer exists as a command, but there is a man page for it, and I think this here is referring to a C structure called tm, probably in libc. Next is the tty command. This still exists and does the same thing. The next is the type command, and this one no longer exists, but there is a bash shell built-in command called type. You can use this command to get some feedback about what exactly a command is. Next is the umount command for unmounting a file system. This is still the same, and it's one I use on a regular basis. Next is the un command. This one no longer exists. Next we have the wc command. This is one that I still use on a regular basis to quickly count the number of lines in a file. Next is the who command. This one still exists, and it does the same thing. But now that we have container software and a lot of cloud virtualization, it's not very useful anymore. And next is the write command, which still exists and has the same purpose. So that takes us to the end of the list of commands from the table of contents. But as you can see, there's still a number of system calls and then user maintained programs. And I won't go through all of these, but I will point out that a few of these system calls are now commands on a modern day machine. So here is exec, and that is a command. Here is exit, which is a command. Here is link, which is a command. And stty, which is a command. And one more that's easy to miss is the sort command, which is found in the user maintained program section. And this was all found in the Unix Programmer's Manual by Ken Thompson and Dennis Ritchie, November 3rd, 1971.
And it's always interesting reading these old documents because you can see where a lot of the modern day conventions come from. For example, having square brackets around an argument to indicate that it's optional. Another interesting nugget from this document is the description of the owner section. So here you can see the abbreviation for Ken Thompson and Dennis Ritchie, but there's also a couple other names here that you don't hear too much about. And finally, it's interesting to see that this manual itself was prepared using the ED text editor, and the formatting was done with the ROF program. So, it turns out that 59%, or 36, of the 61 commands from the original version 1 of Unix are still around in a modern Linux machine. If you'd like to know which one of these commands is my favorite, check out my latest YouTube Shorts video to find out.